Hi everyone, my name is Mathieu and in this video I'll show you how I've made these two Salvador Dali masks inspired on the Casa de Papel uh, series. If you always want to be up to date with new videos, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and hit that bell button as well to get notifications when new videos are being uploaded. If you want to support me, the best way is giving this video a like. So after seeing the first two series of Casa del Papel, also called uh, Money Heist in English, that can be found on Netflix, I was thinking about doing that Salvador Dali mask in carbon fiber. So the idea started with finding the mask online and in this video I'll show you how I've went from making the plug to making a mold, making the carbon fiber piece itself and finishing it with a clear coat. So. First step was masking off uh, the mask, so all the gaps were closed because I'll be pouring this polyurethane foam on the inside just to stiffen it up a bit more. So the flange that I added with tape is just to prevent it from leaking over the mask that will be needed to make the, mo uh, the mold itself. So this is the polyurethane, so it will expand about 16 times in volume. So it's, uh, it's a different foam than builder's foam that you find in, in spray cans because it has a much closer cell and it's more dense. So I think this expands about 16 times in volume. So mostly you will find these foams like uh, polyurethane 100 or something like that. And mostly it will mean that um, one cubic meter of uh, polyurethane would weigh 100 kilograms. So uh, one tenth of one ton. So um, I hope this makes it a bit more clear. So you'll see it expands quite rapidly. So you should count about 30, min uh, 30 seconds of mixing and then it will expand and rise uh, up to the top. So I have to be honest, <laughs> I was a bit lucky with like the expansion. So it was a rough estimate. And I think I calculated around uh, one kilogram like um, in volume, so um, one tenth about that would be 100 grams in uh, polyurethane foam. So I've shaped it, I tried it with a knife, um, just so you know it's better with um, like the saw that I used with uh, small teeth, uh, just to grow, go all the way through and just level it off. And then I'm just preparing everything for the mold now. So I'm using the base plate uh, that it's shaped in a good uh, squared, uh, piece and then I'm just adding some hot glue just to fix the parts on the bottom. So you can see also that I've used some uh, flitting wax just to fill all the gaps. This is quite important to prevent uh, underlock. So it means that if you would make the mold that the uh, original piece or the piece that you're making is not coming out because it has some undercut. So like uh, small uh, edges coming back into the mold that would prevent it from coming out. So now we're ready to start with the mold making. So I've just used the release agent first. So very important in this shots before I just showed you one layer, but you have to apply five layers and then uh, wait for one hour because before you can start with this process. So here I'm just using the gel coat. So it's mixed with 1%, I think, MacP hardener. Depends on the temperature and uh, the quickness that you will be applying it. Um, and then you just wait for it to go tacky and then you can proceed with the next step. So this is the Unimold uh, mold making system. So it consists of three like crucial steps. The first one is the Unimold gel coat. Then you proceed with the coupling coat that will enable a good bond between the gel coat and the finishing coat that would be the tooling uh, resin. So now I'm just preparing everything just like it's good to be well prepared before starting with this because the resin will start to cure into your cup uh, quite rapidly if it's quite hot or if you add it too much MacP hardener. So it's always good to be prepared before starting uh, applying the resin. So first thing is to apply a layer of the coupling resin on top of the part and then you just wet out the CSM, so the chopped uh, strands mat, it's fiberglass and it has like a binder in it and like when you apply it with resin, it will soften up and it will be much easier to apply it in like more complex shapes. Very important is to use the roller to remove all the air as well. So it's very important or you will have some cracks in your mold or uh, pieces of gel coat being ripped off while demolding apart. And that's probably not what you want. So now we're proceeding with the next step. So that would be the tooling resin. So it's much like it's a thickened uh, polyester resin, I think and it will like 
bulk quite a lot, uh, like in, in stiffness and in fiber. So the first mat with the coupling coat was a 100 gram, so now we're using a 450 gram uh, chop strand. So you will going to create a lot of resin on here, but it's very important to have like a nice and stiff mold to prevent it from warping or um, like having some problems with with uh, molds cracking and so on. So I'm, I'm applying three layers. Normally like Easy Composites is talking about four layers, but for a shape like this, because it's like uh, a spherical shape with just a flange, uh, and spheres have a lot of uh, strength. So I was okay with three layers finished by a 30 layer. Um, I think it's called um, like a, the surface tissue or surfacing layer. It's a very lightweight fiberglass that will just nice, make a nice like outer sh shell of your mold. So the next step is just trimming it and I'm using uh, an angle grinder because it's faster than using a Dremel and I'm quite used to it now. So um, then you just let it cure and um, like fully cure, I mean, you wait for 48 hours before demolding. And like you can see, the release agent is working quite well. So the entire piece came off of the uh, melamine boards. And now it's time just like to find a way to remove the plug. So the, the master that we used and like you can see that some gel coats will seep under it, but it's not a big problem because you can just like cut it off or remove it a bit. And here is like a surprise for me because I was thinking like polyurethane resin would stick to everything, but not to the mask. So I don't know what material the mask is made of. I think it's uh, polypropylene, um, but it was a pleasant surprise because I was able to remove the foam shape and still have a good shape with the foam and then remove the mask again. And as you can see, there are some paint stuck into the mold. I think it's because it's a 1K uh, paint that they use, like I think it's made in China, so it's quite cheap and they spray it on. Uh, and it was left into the mold, but no big deal because it can be sanded off or I was even thinking about cleaning it off. Um, but it didn't clean off, but didn't leave any residue on the, on the finished part as well. So no problems here. And I'm just using the mold cleaner from Easy Composites to remove all the filleting wax and make sure that it's very clean before sanding. So another important step here is just to like round all the edges of the mold, because if you're using um, like the, the system of using resin infusion, resin will seep under all the edges. And sometimes while, while removing it with the wedges, you can just snap off some edges of your mold. And that's not something that we want. So, Everything is cleaned, it's sanded with uh, 320 grits, just to be sure there's no residue or uh, contamination left on the mold. And then it's ready again for um, five layers of Easily. So it's a chemical release agent that works very well. And like something extra that you should know is that once it's applied in five or six layers, for the next part, you only need to add one layer just to make sure that it will remove again. So. Now to the carbon fiber uh, part. So I'm using a 650 uh, twill weave, so it's a 12K. And like I've mentioned in previous videos, uh, this is probably my favorite carbon fiber because it's quite dense. So it won't leave uh, like small gaps while applying it in, in 3D shapes. And it's uh, forming quite well and it adds a lot of stiffness as well with one layer. So. I'm just removing one strand to have like a nice cut line and then I'm going through um, with the electric scissors. And then like important here is just to remove the yellow uh, knitting bands just to make sure that it's not left into your part. So it's not a big problem, but it might be visual if you apply the cloth badly in your mold and then you have like a yellow stripe into your mask. So that's not what we want. So with the leftovers, I just adding some, uh, some stiffness and I also shape it. So I'm using the fusion fix, like it's, it's, it's a glue, um, specif uh, it's specific for resin infusion composites works and it will dissolve in the resin while the resin infusion is going on. So, um, the next step is adding the peel ply. So the, Peel ply will enable you to remove the knitted mesh that you're seeing here. So the knitted mesh is uh, quite good to forming to 3D shapes. The only downside is that it's more difficult to remove at the end. So it will uh, suck up quite a good amount of resin 
and will be like a stiff layer that has to be removed at the end. So uh, that's the only downside about that. But the good thing is that it's shaping quite well to 3D shapes. And I think we could say with this mask that this is quite a 3D shape. So next step is adding the vacuum back. So um, no, I'm saying it wrong every time. So it's vacuum bag. Um, so I had it right in this video. So um, the vacuum bag is added with some tacky tape. Then you have the resin infusion line and the vacuum line. So everything is sucked under vacuum, just making sure there's no bridging. So bridging would mean that the vacuum, the vacuum bag is not fully against uh, the carbon fiber and the mold. So here we're preparing the resin. So I'm using a mixture of the slow and fast hardener from Easy Composites combined with the IN2 epoxy resin. And then it's just a matter of mixing it well. So I would go about like two minutes and then make sure that the bubbles, like the, the rough bubbles are coming out of the cup. So just by leaving it for 10 minutes and then you're ready for the resin infusion. So I'm just opening the line right here and then you'll see the resin going all the way through. So this is helped by vacuum, vacuum <laughs> and um, it's being sucked all the way through the part. So once you're reaching the other side, so once the resin has went all the way to the um, resin out, so the vacuum side, vacuum side, um, you can close the clamps and just leave it to cure uh, overnight. If possible, wait for 40, 48 hours just to make sure that it's fully cured. Then you can proceed with the next steps that would be removing the peel ply and then you can just remove the part. So like I want to mention, I wasn't cheating here. Uh, the parts was already uh, removed while removing the peel ply. So that's like the best compliment you can give to a release agent, I guess. So the part is out of the mold. Now we need to start with the trimming. So I'm using the permagrit rotary tool on a Dremel just to go around all the contours of the part. Next step would be sanding again, just to prepare it for clear coat. So I would be sanding with it, I think around 320 and then like, a small mistake I might have made here is just drilling the holes um, because the eyes were a bit off centered, uh, but I think it's still a funny thing. So I have left it like that. Uh, I could also open the holes a bit more, but I was thinking about this more like a, an art piece or a prop that would be on a shelf or something and not just actually to wear. So here I'm preparing the, um, the mini gun. So that would be um, just to spray the, gold so i went for gold i was choosing i like i was thinking about using white or gold but i went for the gold because i think with the black uh, it would be like a bit more different than uh, than with the white so here i'm just applying uh, the gold coat so i've used the mask and just did some cutouts just to have like a nice uh, piece i could put onto it uh, without having paint going all the way over um, over the part so here's the result. So now it's still like sand its carbon fiber with the 1K uh, gold on it. So now we're preparing everything for uh, the 2K. So I'm using my minigun with some clear coat right here, uh, just dusting everything off and then getting ready for um, applying the clear coat. So a little extra. Um, si vous avez des questions, vous pouvez me contacter en français. Uh, all the livrian have a uh, Netherlands canook and now for the English guys you can always contact me in English, Dutch or French in the comments down below. Also let me know what your favorite character is in uh, Casa de Papel. I would go for the professor because I, I think he's cool, he has a nice plan um, and I would be looking quite forward for uh, the next season coming up. So um, hope you guys as well. This is a finished product. Uh, <laughs> Like looking a bit silly, but I think it's like a cool end shot. Uh, and then you'll get the next shot right here. So I'll leave you with some extras of two projects that you might like as well. So that would be the Pokeball that I did and the other would be the Iron Man mask. So the Iron Man mask is quite similar to this one. So I hope you like, I hope you guys like this video and see you guys in the next one.